Our fair account is busier than ever. We're doing record-breaking sales and you should be too. So these five things will help you make the most of fair right now. Let's dive in. Hi everyone, Lucy from Candid Founders here. I've been growing my own e-commerce business for over five years now. We are on a growth path to seven-figure revenue and we are sharing our learnings along the way. We have had huge growth on fair in particular, the wholesale marketplace, so much so that we are the fastest growing sock brand in Europe. That is huge for us. Our sales are ramping up so hard right now. So I'm going to share with you what we do to achieve consistent growth on fair. The first one is we have segmented our customers into A, B, C, and D customers. Our A customers are only 20% of our total customer base, but they are bringing in 80% of the revenue, which is a typical stat you see in businesses. And we're also seeing it in the retail side of the business as well. The idea with the A, B, C, and D segment is that you're trying to push your customers up the levels to get as many into that A and B sellers as possible because they are going to be your most valuable customers going forward. Our A sellers get relationship managed, so they get personal emails, they get stuff in the post, they get calls with us, we even visit them. And these are the customers that we are seeing increase their AOV with us, they're increasing their lifetime value with us, every time we, we interact with them, every time they're coming back and ordering more and more stock from us, which is obviously amazing and we love to see it. Our B sellers are our customers that we're looking at as high potential to be moved up to be an A selling customer. They might have done something like a large opening order or they've ordered a few times but they haven't ordered much yet. So we also need to put more effort into these customers to be converting them up into being an A selling customer um, and hopefully increasing that AOV, increasing that lifetime value and just getting them to be a more valuable position for us. In speaking to our A and B customers, we've been able to improve our proposition tenfold. We've used that customer feedback to bring in a myriad of point of sale options. So we've got everything from a tiny point of sale stand up to moving up to large ones that can hold up to like 80 pairs of socks and we're looking at our future range as well, all on the back of retailer feedback. We've also improved our, our packaging itself and the, even the product. So we take into account our retailers' opinions, animals that they're asking for next, because we sell animal socks. Um, so any suggestions that they have for designs, if we've got a customer that orders a lot from us, we are taking their opinions into account when we're planning our product rhythm for the next year. Do also consider that an A or B seller might be an aspirational account. So this is a retailer that you really want to work with. They could be a big retailer, a large chain or anything like that, just a retailer that you really want to work with that aligns well with your brand. So they might not have ordered from you yet, but you're going to put more effort into like bringing those customers on board. And then we move into our C sellers. So these are our one-time customers. They've ordered from us once, they haven't ordered too much, but we can see an alignment here. We can see some potential into the future. We're not relationship managing these customers yet. We don't have time. We're spending more of our time on the B and A customers, but these customers do have some potential. So they're still getting all the emails that are going to B and A customers. Um, it would be a waste to not send it to those customers, but then you can start to see a trickle of customers move up into B. Um, but a lot of the time we see C customers might just stay where they are. And then D sellers are your no hopes. So people that ignore all your content, they might order from you once, they might request a sample and then disappear off the face of the earth. Maybe they're just not aligned with your brand at all. Um, and you might even consider rejecting um, these customers if you kind of heavily vet the orders that are coming through on fair, or if you decide that the order is just not worth your time. Um, so really recommend having a look you know, at your minimum order quantity on fair. Maybe you need to set it as higher if you think you're getting orders that aren't worth your time. But your D sellers aren't really gonna go anywhere. We still send emails to them. They might as well, they might as well get the emails. Um, the work has already been done, um, but we don't see a lot of those customers move up the funnel and that's okay. The second point is we send a Christmas family newsletter to our retailers. We now do this every year, so I will write a letter from me, the founder, a lovely Christmas kind of family roundup feel, um, thanking them for their support this year. Um, giving them kind of key updates of what we've been up to this year, what's happened in the business, you know, giving them that real like small business independent vibe, um, you know, bringing people into the human side of the business. So I talk a lot about the team and what we've been up to, um, what me and Andy have been doing, um, and people really enjoy that. And actually it works really well on retail and wholesale, so double up there and send it to both. I used to send these as direct letters to our retailers. So I, you know, last year I picked maybe 200 retailers. They received this as a physical letter, obviously very costly. I mean, it's a lovely thing to be able to receive, but it's very costly, um, also hard to track. We did have a discount code on it, so we could see some orders coming through, but it wasn't reliable enough for us to track. So we're going back to email this year. Everyone will get it 
and then we'll be able to track it. So we'll see how that goes. What I would say is it's not a sales tool. It is not salesy in the slightest, but we actually really get sales off the back of it. I think people just love to see it, see what we're up to, um, get a flavor of it. And, you know, we get to wish people well for the Christmas season and, you know, it jogs people's um, memories to order for Christmas. The third thing that I advise you do is have a look at doing pre-sales on your Christmas stock. We, for example, have got some incredible Christmas designs coming in this year that we've not done before. We think they're gonna fly off the shelf. So we're allowing our retailers to pre-sale them. So we're allowing our retailers to pre-order them. At this time of year in particular, our retailers are getting worried about the kind of demand for stock. Do they have enough to meet the demand? Do we have the right stock levels for them? Are they going to be able to get stock in quick enough to meet the demand? It's kind of, they're really worried about missing the opportunity of Christmas because it is the biggest time of year for retail. People want to sell as much as possible and like not miss that boat. So you can really capitalize on this. Retailers want to guarantee their stock for Christmas. They might not want to pay for it early and they might not want to have it in stock early, but they want to guarantee that they're gonna get it at the right time for their business, ready to start selling to their customers for Christmas. The beauty of FAIR is it makes it so easy to do these pre-orders. It's just a kind of a flick of a button on the website. So we list our stock um, early. We get those pre-orders in. This is the best pre-order like session we've ever had on any product. Um, we've done pre-orders pre before, but this is the most popular by far. And um, I think it's a kind of prediction of how good these designs are. And the good thing is that you can kind of set that date. So retailers know when it's coming in. They don't pay at point of sale. They still get their net payment terms. What I would say as a word of warning is set your delivery date to kind of longer than you think it will be to account for any like delays that, that might happen. So under promise and over deliver, it will really help. Um, because if you start missing that date by a long way, you'll get canceled orders, you know, you'll lose trust with people and customers really want that confidence that they're gonna order something and know when they get it. At the very worst case scenario, all you really need to do is keep them up to date with it. So as soon as you have an update from your manufacturer or if you're manufacturing yourself, you know, you'll have a clearer time scale, communicate that with your customers who are ordering your, your stock on pre-order. So we already know that we have some small delays um, with our stock being dispatched to us. So we've gone out to our customers to explain this um, and it's not as bad as it seems because we've kind of under promised and we will be able to over deliver when it comes to it. So I do recommend trying pre-sales. The worst case scenario is you put it up and no one orders, no love lost, and then you'll just sell it when it goes live. The fourth point is your email marketing. It is so crucial at this time of year. We are sending at least one email a week. We are ramping it up for Christmas season because throughout the rest of the year we send maybe one email a fortnight outside of kind of key product launches where we you know we have a few more emails flying around at that time of year but during Christmas we are sending so many more emails you need to stay front of mind for your retailers and you need to be there showing them how you support them how you've got stock ready and you know you will have so much more to talk about this time of year don't forget you've got Black Friday coming up and that typically starts so much earlier than the end of November in retail as well we use HubSpot for our emails and have been really enjoying it we find it much better than FAIR's email marketing tool which isn't the most reliable in terms of deliverability because there's so many people using that platform to try and send. So we use FAIR as our main sales channel and it is perfect for that, but we use HubSpot for our email marketing and it just means we have full control of when the emails are going out and to who. Every single email that we are sending out at the moment is making lots of sales. So don't miss this opportunity. Don't be scared of sending too many emails at this time of year. In fact, this is the time of year to send it. Just make sure they're packed with value. And this is kind of a piece of advice that I give to everyone when I'm talking about email marketing show people that you're there to support them. So show your customers, your retailers, that you're there to support them, make it as easy as possible for them to buy from you. And then that hopefully means that they will come to you over somebody else. And finally, the fifth thing is we are analyzing those segments I talked to you about in my first point. And we are doing that and working out who hasn't ordered yet. If there are any A sellers who haven't ordered from us yet and it's getting into kind of the crucial Christmas selling period, then we are going to them, we're sending them a personal message and understanding what their stock levels are at the moment. And that's a good way to go into it because you're not going for a hard sales pitch you're just checking in and you know making sure that they are ready because they might have plenty of stock already um, or they might just have forgotten or they've got busy and it's a good nudge for them to get their stock in and then once we've done that for our a sellers we can start to do that for our b sellers as well on top of this we are getting customers you know maybe even some key retailers of ours that are either unsubscribed from us or they're not opening our emails we get it they're busy people so we are then sending them our autumn and 
winter catalogue in the post. So it's a really good way to get in front of them if they're not opening their emails or if they're unsubscribed. And it means that they have all of our beautiful new stock right in front of them. They're also more likely to kind of take that in than an email because there'll be so many emails flying around. So it really helps us stand out. And you know, it's a really lovely thing to be able to receive in the post. So those are my five pointers um, for making the most of fair this Christmas season, really putting in the work and it will bring you those sales that you really need right now. Give my pointers a try. Let me know if you do in the comments or if there is anything you're using that is working for you. And I hope you have a really fruitful Christmas season. If you found this video useful, please show your support by dropping us a like. And you can subscribe for weekly content to help you and your business grow. I'll see you next time.